In this video, I interview Bay Area photographer Marilyn Nguyen. Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. So in today's podcast interview, I interview Bay Area portrait photographer Marilyn Nguyen. Now Marilyn is known for her composite photography and also for her very warm tones in her images. I really love her editing style and her just creative vision for portrait photography. And so I dive into that with her today, where she gets inspiration, how she comes up with ideas for her photos, and how she finds models. And we also talk about the impact that social media, particularly Instagram, have on photography and the way people get treated based on their follower count. So I think you guys will find this interview really interesting. And without further ado, let's dive in. Welcome to the Portrait Fam podcast. Tonight I have a guest on Marilyn Nguyen. So Marilyn is a photographer who I found through Instagram maybe six months ago or so. And I've really enjoyed the, the photos she's been posting. So welcome to the podcast, Marilyn. All right, thanks so much for having me, Dan. Honestly, I've never done anything like this, so I'm super excited. Kind of nervous too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. So we'll we'll have a, we're gonna chat about photography, talk a little bit about like Instagram and all that stuff. So uh, for those in the audience who maybe are not familiar with your work, why don't you give a little background about yourself and how you got into photography? For sure. All right, so you can find my Instagram at Marilyn Nguyen with an extra N in the middle. <laughs> So um, I mainly do portrait photography, and um, I've been doing photography for about six years now. But I haven't. Uh, I started doing it seriously around um, three or four years ago. I don't really quite remember. Mm -hmm. So um, so right now I'm a second year in college. So I started photography around like after like the summer after eighth grade. Um, so. I don't exactly remember how I got into photography. I think I just like randomly came across like a Tumblr blog and I was like, oh, these photos look super nice. Like I really want to get into this, right? And so, yeah, I don't really have like a crazy story on how I started, right? <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it was literally like the internet, like Tumblr or like, um, what was that one website, Flickr or something like that? Yeah. Flickr. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I was like one of those websites and I was like, wow, these photos look really nice. And um, and so it wasn't until my freshman year of high school was when um, my parents purchased me my very first DSLR, like a high grade camera. It was like a Nikon 3200, like it's like discontinued right now. It's like those super old entry level cameras. Um, I remember when I was starting out, I was like, this is so hard. Like, <laughs> I remember <laughs> um, I just like picked up the camera. I didn't even know the difference between like automatic and manual. So I just like started taking pictures and I realized how oh, all of these look really bad. Like, <laughs> so this I, doesn't like, look like those Tumblr photos. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing wrong? Right. And so, um, throughout my first two years of high school, I, I definitely spent a lot of time like on YouTube trying to learn like the different functions of like the camera, like just trying to know how to use it. It was definitely really hard. Like I struggled a lot with it when I was starting out. And then um and then I started learning how to edit on like Photoshop and Lightroom. So mm. yeah, like a lot of my days was like after school to go home, like watch YouTube videos, practice like um practice editing these photos. It wasn't until my sophomore year of high school, I joined the school's yearbook club. And so I think that was like a really big part of like my photography journey. So I applied to yearbook and I was like, yeah, I'm not super great at photography, but I'm like super like interested in it. So I think like they were just like, okay, cool. Like you're in. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so um, definitely like um, from my beginning of like the yearbook like journey, like um, the the upperclassmen definitely taught me a lot on like um, Photoshop because that was basically like a really big program that we used in the class. And so mm -hmm. that was basically where like I started to really learn, like really grasp the whole like concept. And then um, from there, I started to kind of build like a, a business for myself. There was like a bunch of people from my school asking for like prom photos or like graduation shoots, right? And so something that started off really small ended up growing to be like a lot bigger. And so that's basically how I kind of like built like a quote quote brand for myself. Mm -hmm. And then um, it wasn't until junior year was when Instagram started to become more popular, like for, um, for me and like my friends. So I started to use it and then I just like, 
basically just posted like my work and then um i posted like i tried to post like pretty frequently so i guess i kind of grew from there and that's basically <laughs> that's basically how i started honestly and i and then even today like i still like go out and shoot as much as i can and yeah that's that's pretty much it <laughs> that's cool so when you were when you were first getting into it like were there any like photographers or like youtubers that really you learned a lot from like when you were just just starting out you know what the really interesting is what the, the really interesting thing is that when i was starting out like i actually like none of my friends were like into it like i didn't know anyone like in my high school who like did photography and so i was pretty much like on my own with that so um i didn't really have a lot of people to talk to about it so i was literally just always on youtube like looking at like other um, I don't really have like a particular YouTuber that I watched back then. I just remember like Googling like, oh, like how to like make a photo look like warm and glowy or whatever, like on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> but the ones, yeah. Um, but it wasn't until like yearbook when I like started to meet other people who, who started to like help me out and I found other people with the same interests as me. And then, um, and yeah, like um, at the beginning, I was definitely like kind of like doing it on my own kind of thing yeah i had a similar experience like when i first started getting into photography like i was doing i did mostly like street and architecture stuff when i started like i had just moved to boston and i was just like taking my camera around as i explored the city and i was in grad school at the time and all the people like the people who i hung out with were like people i went to school with and none of them were really into photography they're like oh it's cool that you're taking pictures like i like what you're doing but <laughs> oh, you feel that. It's like, oh cool a camera you just push a button right i'm just like yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly so so it was funny like i didn't really get totally immersed into it until a couple years ago i started going to like local meetup like photography meetups here in boston and like i met a lot of people through that and that's like when i really started to connect with a lot of different photographers yeah for sure for sure instagram yeah. definitely helped me like connect with a bunch of other photographers like outside of my area and i definitely got to meet a lot more people with the same interests as me mm -hmm. so when you were so i know you do a lot of like portrait photography like are the people that you know you put like post photos of on instagram are these people that you're like, are they your friends or is it like, you know, are you reaching out to models? Like, how do you find people that, uh, like, how do you find people to shoot with? You know what? That's really, that's a really funny thing to talk about. Um, I'm actually pretty lucky that a lot of my friends are, um, they're actually like models. And so um, I, I rarely find myself like going on Instagram and DMing other people. Like, I still do that like once in a while, mm. but um like I just happen to have like a lot of friends who enjoy getting like their photos taken. I'm just like, oh, that's that's super convenient. Like you're my <laughs> friends, kind of thing. Um, yeah, like I know like a lot of people are, uh, they're always asking like, where do you find your models? Like, and I'm just like, you know, they're literally people who like went to like my high school. Like I just asked them like, oh, like um, you were like in my history class. Like, would you be down to shoot or something? Like, it's literally that's literally like. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I know, right? But I do like um, sometimes, like when I do want to shoot with like new people, I go on Instagram, and I know like um, uh, you know like hit the like the H team, how they have like the hub. Mm -hmm. Like I go in there like a few times, and I do like reach out to like other models who are close by, and so um, yeah. But most of my models, they're I'm actually pretty lucky that they're already like my friends, so it's like super like convenient. Yeah, it's like. You just like call up one of your buddies like hey i need some photos for instagram like let's shoot <laughs> i need some new content <laughs> yeah, for sure for sure <laughs> that's awesome so I'm, I'm curious uh what's your what's your experience been with the hub so far like i made an account like right when they launched the app but i haven't really used it since then because at least when i got on there it was like in my area all the people who I saw who were on the app, I'm like, oh, I already like know these people through Instagram, or I see that. <laughs> so, <laughs> what has your experience been like using that app? Just out of curiosity. Um, you know what? I honestly, I only used it like a few times. Um, and just like what you said, I ended up seeing like a lot of people I already like knew on Instagram. There was like a few people I did shoot with that I did me on the hub. Like they just like messaged me, and then mm -hmm. like 
their profile on the hub. But um, at one point, there was a glitch where I couldn't log in anymore. And so <laughs> not really sure what happened there. But um, besides that glitch, it's, it's definitely like a great way, um, like a personalized platform where like photographers, models, like just any other like create creative can like connect with each other like i think it's great i haven't been using it a lot maybe i'll use it more in the future mm -hmm. but I, I think it's pretty cool yeah yeah so with the the glitch because i think i might have gone through something similar was it so what happened to me was i got an email saying that somebody had sent me a message on the hub and i hadn't looked at it for i don't know six months or something so i was like oh cool like you know i'll go check this out and when i went to log in it was asking me to like plug in more information like about like, I don't know what it was. It was like either like, you know, I think they were trying to figure out like who's a photographer, who's a makeup artist, like categories and stuff. But there, I didn't want to like do that. I just wanted to like see the message and there was no way to like skip past that screen. So I just like closed the app. I was like, I'm not. <laughs> but I think for me, I just couldn't log in like, um, like I'm pretty sure I punched in the right password. I just like it kept saying like my password was incorrect. So every single time I would have to reset my password when I'm when I'm very sure I'm punching in the right password. Um, I think this happened to a few of my other friends too because I know like they're still pretty new. Like they're yeah. still developing the platform. But um, I think another thing was like I did get some messages from like other like creatives, but I wouldn't get notified of them until like a lot later after they sent me the message yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like i would get like a few messages and then i wouldn't get notified until like like a month later <laughs> i literally just got notified of this message like would you see still be down to like shoot <laughs> <laughs> and then they get it a month after that it's like you can send each other six messages a year <laughs> so it like never happens <laughs> but, um i know they're they're developing like a mobile app now like they're definitely trying to improve it um pretty excited for that actually but um i think it's coming out soon or i don't know if it came out already but i'm pretty i'm kind of looking forward to it actually yeah yeah i think it'd be cool to see other apps that can provide some sort of a challenge to instagram because like i mean when it comes to the photography space it really seems like instagram kind of has a monopoly like there are other apps out there, like there's 500 PX, like, you know, there's a couple other apps where, you know, creatives can post, but like, if you want to have, I mean, most people are on Instagram and it has so many users and stuff that like, you know, if I were to post a photo on 500 PX, I'd get like five likes or something like, or like five followers. But on Instagram, like I'm meeting a lot more people and there's a lot more people seeing my work. So it'd be interesting to see like any kind of like other app that could come up that would have somewhat of a user base or even like a targeted user base saying like this app is for photographers and models and can kind of like target that niche so that you know you could meet people in other ways i guess yeah definitely i like completely agree with you like instagram like definitely wins the game when it comes down to like the the, like the photo sharing community like um you know this is really interesting i really did hear that like instagram like originally wasn't really made for like business purposes it was like mm -hmm. more people sharing like like their personal lives like you know like going out with dinner with friends like let's snap a photo kind of thing it was never really meant for like professionals to like gain like a following to like promote mm -hmm. their work. so i really i always thought that was really interesting like to be honest um yeah like it's evolved yeah it's, yeah it's evolved a lot over the years like i like originally you could only post square photos you could only post photos that you took on your phone like you couldn't upload like you know dslr photos and they've just evolved like they didn't have you know instagram stories which is basically just the entirety of snapchat like built into <laughs> as a feature <laughs> like it's definitely evolved like it's, it's crazy like i think like even for, like i personally like go on instagram like a lot more than i do like over my other apps like mm -hmm. it's definitely evolved <laughs> yeah i don't know if you saw this um because this just came out today um i was just talking to a friend about it earlier but did you see the announcement for uh igtv i i saw it like really right before this podcast like i was yeah. like 
Me too. I was just like, I was just watching a couple of videos on there. I was like, this is super interesting now. <laughs> confused like i thought like i was like am i on instagram like do i open the right app and i was like this is kind of weird yeah <laughs> isn't it, it seems to me like a just like a extendo version of like instagram stories yeah pretty much <laughs> like yeah. i think it seems like like facebook is trying to and like facebook and instagram like they're trying to find a way to challenge youtube like they're trying to find a way to like get people to watch video on their platform more consistently like you know facebook went really hard into video like maybe a year or two ago like they were doing facebook live and stuff but the way people people don't go to facebook like specifically to watch videos like they're going there to like you know interact with friends and, and stuff so I think they're just trying to find like Facebook as a company is trying to find a way to like compete with YouTube. And I think this is just going to be another attempt at that. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. Like yeah. I'm probably going to make a couple of like photography tutorials and upload them on Instagram just to see what happens. Cause like <laughs> I've been doing YouTube for a couple of years now and like, that's kind of my, my main thing, but I'm always like curious to try when these new apps or when these apps like roll out new features like this. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Like I thought I thought it was really weird at first. I was like, what is this? But it's I feel like every time like a like Instagram comes up with like a new like a new feature, like at first people are gonna be like, okay, it's kinda weird. I don't think I'll be using it. And then like maybe like a few weeks later you see everyone's using it. So, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that was um that was like what happened with stories. Everybody yeah. was like the, yeah. I remember like ninety percent of the first posts on stories are like Insta Snapchat or like, you know, this is Snapchat, like all kinds of stuff like that. And then everybody just started using it and like People who were using Instagram and Snapchat, like a lot of them stopped using Snapchat because they're like, I can just do it all on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, it's, yeah, like that's so true. <laughs> like, even for me, like, I don't even go on like Snapchat anymore because I'll just like be watching other people's Instagram stories. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I deleted mine. I deleted mine like two years ago. I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about just like your approach to photography. Um, so you have like a very particular like editing style, like you've got like the high contrast and the warm tones, like how, like what kind of um, work inspires you or like what, what kind of goes into your creative process of like taking a photo from like the concept all the way through to like editing it? That's a really good question. Um, I, I definitely appreciate like all sorts of styles of photography, like whether it's like high contrast or like vintage or like the film vibes. Like um, for me, I I always thought that like the photos who like photos were like they're really bright with high contrast, like they they always stood out to me. Like I'd be scrolling like through my like, Tumblr feed or like my Instagram feed and like photos that are like really bright and vibrant, like they're always something that catch my eye. And um, that's pretty much like what really got me like into this particular style. Um, for me, concept wise, like um, I I plan to do this more in the future. But when it con comes out of concepts, like I'm always just more like as long as it looks good, like it'll be fine. <laughs> kind yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> something more like with more meaning, like in the future. But um, I always try to make something something a little bit different about my photos. Like I definitely do like a lot of Photoshop work, kind of mm. like like uh what's the word kind of like surreal aspects a little like really like interesting stuff that i can add to my photos to make it stand out from like a normal portrait like for example i like to like photoshop in like falling polaroids or like birds mm -hmm. some of the stuff that's like people might think is impossible to capture which is it really is kind of hard to capture but um that's which is why like i kind of like to take advantage of photoshop to like bring in these like really interesting features to my photos just to make it stand out pretty much. Yeah. I think the first photo of yours I ever saw was like, uh, the, it's like a model standing on like a hill or something. And there's like all these hot air balloons in the background. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. That was actually like, um, the one photo where I was, I was actually just playing around. Like I was just like, um, cause before that photo I would, I would try to keep my photos simple, kind of like, I know like a lot of people, they do appreciate like, um, not heavily Photoshopped photos, 
But um, ever since I did that post, I was like, oh, you know what? Like with like these tools, I can definitely make something normal, just like more interesting, more creative. And so I, I think it was like that one photo you saw, like the hot air balloons. I was like, wow, like I can definitely like, even though it might not by not it might not be real, but mm -hmm. you can definitely make it seem real, like with these tools. Yeah. Yeah, like you. I mean, if you just look, I mean, to me, it was like, oh, I. I could see it as a composite as a photographer just because, but like, if you're just looking at the photo, like you wouldn't tell, like you wouldn't know like, Oh, this is like, you know, like this is oh. put together in Photoshop. Like you wouldn't just recognize it from it because you like put it together so well, like the stuff in the backgrounds, like slightly out of focus, the stuff that's closer is like got different focus and stuff. So you layer it together very well. I'm definitely still trying to like improve like my skills like in Photoshop. I'm trying to make it as real as possible. I'm definitely still learning, but it's definitely a type of style that I would definitely want to improve and go for in the future. Yeah. So with the the composite stuff, like do you do you kind of like pre-visualize this stuff in your head? Like you when you're taking the portrait, do you know that you want to add stuff in later or is it more like when you put the photos on your computer and you're looking through them, you're like, I think I could add some stuff into this. And then you kind of come up with creative ideas from there. It's actually a combination of both. Like um, a lot, actually most of the time I would have the idea like beforehand, I'd be like, oh, I want to do like this type of photo. And then I ask one of my friends, like, would you be going to do something like this? Right. And so most of the time it's, is like planned but sometimes when i'm just like randomly editing photos and i'm just like okay this seems kind of boring like i'm gonna try and make it more interesting and then like it's really like a combination of both when it comes down to like um the editing process yeah it's like i'm gonna throw some birds in here mix things yeah. up a bit <laughs> definitely that's literally that <laughs> <laughs> that's cool so with with the composite stuff are you where are you getting the images that you like put in? Are you taking those photos like of the birds or are you grabbing them elsewhere? Like how do you, how do you like pull together all the ingredients that you need for the composite? For that, that's also a combination between like me, like taking like the photos beforehand of like a bird separately, or I just like, just like look up stock photos on the, in on the Insta on the, almost like Instagram, I mean, on the Instagram. <laughs> on the Instagrams. <laughs> that sounds like one of like an old person, all these kids these days on their Instagrams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just like go around, like, I know like, um, there's like these stock photo websites where people just have them like up for like use, um, for like people like me who are just like looking for like stock photos to use. Um, yeah, and so I pretty much kind of just pull, like, kind of, like, both, like, for example, like, um, I would take a photo, and I would see, like, one bird, I would kind of, like, duplicate it, like, throughout yeah. the photo, or if I want to put, like, different birds, I'll just go on the internet, go on, like, a stock photo website, and then I'll just download it from there, and then I, I had to modify it to, like, make sure, like, fits in the photo, and, like, so forth. Yeah, the right size and everything. Yeah. So, with, do you, do you do your, like, color grading stuff in Photoshop, too, or is that... Do you use something else for that? Oh, so I actually, um, so my process goes how, uh, it, I kind of use both Lightroom and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So at first I, I fix all the colors in Lightroom just because it's just so much more convenient and easy. Yeah. Cause I, Lightroom's kind of built for that. Like I could do it on Photoshop, but I think that like the whole concept, how like on Lightroom you can edit like multiple at a time without like having to yeah. open individually open up a new file each time and so i i go in lightroom i do all my color grading and then i pick out the ones i like the most and then i export it and i bring it into photoshop and i do like a little like more edits like i would like uh, kind of fix up like the skin uh like skin retouching um fixing the lighting a little bit and then and then i do like whatever i need to do from there with the composite photos that's cool that's awesome. So like, how long does it usually take you? Like if you're going to do a composite mm -hmm. and you kind of have the idea already, like, you know what you want to do in advance, like when you, when you pull it in, like how much time do you spend on like an individual photo? Sometimes it, it really depends actually. Like sometimes like, um, it depends on like the lighting as well. Like for my photos, like sometimes it'd be super easy. Like I can get it done within like maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but sometimes things just don't work out like I get really yeah. <laughs> I'm just like what's going on like this is just not this just doesn't look right right and so I'm pretty sure like every other photographer understands this like when you can't just like when you just can't get a photo to look right you know and so that yeah. and 
taking me like hours, honestly. So it could vary. It really depends. Yeah. For me, it's always the skin tones, like getting the skin tones right afterwards, especially if I was shooting in like a variety of different lighting situations. Like I was just in Toronto a couple weeks ago and I shot with a few people there and like we were we were like going from like outdoors on the street. We walked into some like flower shop. And so like the lighting situation was like totally different every time. And when I got the like I loved all the photos in the camera and then when I put them on the computer and I was trying to like get the skin tones to look right. I was like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. <laughs> totally, I totally know that feeling. Actually, what's even worse is like when you think of photos and focus on your camera. Cause you know how like uh... <laughs> think is in focus. So then when you blow it up on your computer, you realize it's like completely out of focus. Like... <laughs> yeah. Or just slightly off. Like it's just like it looks sharp in camera, like on the small, like back of the LCD screen. And then you zoom in on the eyes and it's like just a little blurry and you're like, no. <laughs> their hand or like their shoulder or something like everything except for their face. I'm just like, dang it. That's like, <laughs> that's like my nightmare every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you, what's something you find like really challenging about, about shooting portraits? Like, either during the photo shoot or the editing process? Like what's something that you either is like a roadblock or something you want to improve on? Like what's, what's the challenge you face? For me, I think one of the biggest challenges is just think of thinking of new ideas every time, you know, like I like, I come across a lot of like artist block a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to be like, oh man, like I don't really know like what's something creative I can do, you know? And so I just end up, I find myself taking photos I'm not really proud of. Like it's just something that doesn't really stand out to me. Um, the editing process itself isn't as challenging as um, as the whole like thinking of new ideas kind of thing to me. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like you have your, your editing workflow down. So like that's probably like once you've taken the shot that's like creative, you're like, all right, I'm, I know what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even right now, like, I'm just like, shoot, like, I don't know, like, what's something super creative I can do. But I think like, um, like taking breaks, like, um, I used to like take a lot of photos, like consistently. And then I realized, oh, gosh, this is really tiring. Like I'm losing like my, my creativity. And so I think like taking breaks in between really helps like, like just like my creativity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely get that. Like I go through periods where I'll be doing like a few portrait shoots like a week and then it it starts to become like a almost like I'm a machine. Like I'm just kind of doing the same thing over and over again, especially like what I find trouble with is, you know, I live in Boston and it's a really it's a fairly small city. And so you tend to shoot in the same neighborhoods over and over again. So it's like trying to find different spots like within different neighborhoods or like go down streets that you never you know you never seen before or like haven't been to in a while yeah. and like not just falling back on like the same thing like oh i'm not you know i'm tired of doing portrait shoots in the boston public garden which like oh. everybody shoots there and like i've shot there a million times and it's like yeah i've i've seen the flowers like i think i'm good <laughs> i need to do yeah. something that's a little yeah. different <laughs> It's like it's just definitely really hard to think of something new every single time. Yeah. So um you said you're going to school in Irvine. Like where do you live in the Bay Area? Do you live like have you lived in San Francisco? Do like where where are some places you like to shoot like kind of in your area? I actually live in Fremont, which is 30 minutes south of San Francisco. Um okay. yeah. And so it's like it's more like South Bay kind of kind of area. Um so surprisingly a lot of the photos like i take of like um they're actually really close to my house like i never really have to go <laughs> super far or anything i think like san francisco or like santa cruz would be like the furthest i've ever gone for like a photo shoot like um when i'm back home but mm. um yeah like honestly like i've taken a lot of photos like literally like just in front of my house <laughs> like, <laughs> like very local areas like i never really find myself like going somewhere super far unless it's like um Unless it's like there's like events going on, for example, I know like right now there's like the Alameda County Fair, which is like um, it's kind of like a carnival kind of vibe, and so mm -hmm. that's like when I would actually go out and, and then like take photos there. But most of the time, it's actually like in my own city. That's cool. Yeah, and it's interesting too because like I've noticed you. It seems like 
you know, you're not shooting really urban looking shots. Like it's you're, you're within nature. There's like all kinds of stuff like that. So it's interesting because one of the things I hear on like comments on my YouTube channel and stuff, people feel very uninspired about where they live. Uh -huh. And my belief, my belief is like, if you try to take a new look on it, like a fresh approach to like the area you live in, you can find like cool places to shoot and come up with something creative. Definitely. I, um, I actually got a lot of comments like that too. Like people are like people who live like in, in my city, they're just like, how like do you make like Fremont look so good, right? I'm just like, you know, you just have to like really like open your eyes and like like <laughs> honestly, like a lot of my friends, they would go like hours and hours away to like go to like a certain place to take photos. I'm just like, I'm pretty sure like you can like do something similar here. And so um like for me, I like I know like a lot of like very simple and like different areas in my city that um like that I can just like use different angles and different lighting to make it look super like super different you know what i mean <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so in terms of um camera gear because this is something that i feel like everybody gets asked about when they're a photographer like what <laughs> what what's like what's your like go-to like camera lens combination like what's some of the stuff you like to shoot with for sure all right so i actually have a very odd setup so um the past four years, I've been using the Canon Rebel T3i paired mm. with the Sigma 18 and 35 millimeter lens. Um, and then I also use like the giant like um, 7200 lens. I don't use it as often, but it's really helpful. Like back in high school, and I would take photos like sports events. Like that would that would really be helpful because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for portraits, I usually use like the Sigma 1835. I also have a 50 millimeter lens, but I actually don't use that as often. But um, I recently upgraded to the Canon 60. So here's here's the odd part. So the Sigma lens I have, the 1835, that's actually a crop sensor lens that's supposed to be like for crop sensor cameras, right? Mm. So it's a full frame camera. And so technically they're not quote, quote, compatible. But because um, there's a lot of like vignetting when you zoom in and out. And honestly, I... I was kind of just too lazy to switch out my lens. So I was just like, you know what? This works. Like, as long as I keep it, like, it's from 1835, but at 35, it like works just like a 35 prime. So I'm just like, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Later, I'll switch it, like, um, maybe like pretty soon, actually, because it's been a while. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much my setup. Like, I usually use like my 18 and 35, but I keep it at 35. So I basically use it like a 35 prime on my Canon 60. <laughs> That's cool. You heard it here, folks. If you want to get great photos, put a crop sensor lens on a full frame camera. <laughs> I get so confused, right? <laughs> That's great. I love hearing that too, because it's like people get so hung up on gear. And it's like I'm always trying to impress on people that, like, it's not the gear that you have, it's not the setup that you have that's going to make the picture good it's your creativity it's the way you you approach photography it's like your composition your concept your editing like all of that is way more important than like what camera and lens you're using yeah you are you are so right like i actually did upgrade into last year like it was really recent um like honestly like for me like gear wasn't it was never like a really big part of like um of like my perspective on photography because even for me like uh, like yeah like the full frame is great like it's like definitely like it helps a lot but i still have to definitely like um i don't know how to describe this like even when i was using my rebel like it wasn't the gear that held me back it was like my own like skills and editing and like how to compose mm -hmm. and how i can like work with like like what i had to like make like a good photo like it was never really the gear like it was all like on me you know what i mean yeah, it's like you were just starting out. It like buying an expensive camera at that point in your photography journey wouldn't have made your pictures better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's still like you still need to like learn and all that. Like having like great, like you can have like the best gear in the world, but that will make you a good photographer. Like that was like always my mindset. <laughs> yeah. Well, it shows you're you're doing great work. Okay. So let's see. I had some other questions about your process. Let me pull these up. Mm -hmm. So are there any other like photographers that, what are some of your favorite photographers that you follow on Instagram? Like, is there anybody whose work that you 
either really enjoy or find really inspiring right now? Um, my top three favorite photographers right now is, um, I don't know if you heard of her. She goes by Fetching Tigers on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's very, like, a surreal, like, photographer. Like, um, I just love, like, her editing. Like, she's just so creative. Like, I definitely want to go something towards that, like, in the future. Mm -hmm. I definitely go on her page for, like, a lot of, like, um, for a lot of inspiration. And then um, there's another girl. Her name, I think, is Georgia something, uh, Heart City or something. Something like that. She's also, like, a surreal photographer. Um, but when it comes down to, like, more simple, I I really like the whole, like, um, California, like LA photographer, like super simple, like palm trees, Beverly Hills kind of photographer. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really like the vibe of those. So my favorite would definitely be like, um, I think he goes by Danny Rosenfeld. I think he's, I think he's moving to the Bay. Actually, he's definitely one of my favorites. I just love the tones and the lighting of his photos. Mm -hmm. like for me, like when you look at like all these photographers, I want to like kind of do like a combination of like of all the things I like about them into mm -hmm. my own photography. Yeah, yeah, I think that's super important. Like one of the things that um like one of the things that I've seen on Instagram is, you know, certain certain trends in photography will become popular and then a lot of photographers just try to copy that. Like we had like the whole neon signs and oh, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the string lights and the prisms and like, you know, I've tried a lot of that stuff too. Like it's if you want to shoot that stuff that's fine, but like I feel like a lot of people's motivation behind trying to shoot those images is they want to either be like, they want to be posted on Moody grams or they want, you know, they want to get a lot of likes or something. So right. it's cool to see photographers like yourself and some of the other photographers that you've mentioned, you know, trying to carve out their own style and just like push their own creative boundaries. Definitely. I definitely had a phase where I just wanted to follow all of like the popular trends. So I was like, okay, like this is, like this is cool like this is definitely like really cool like there's nothing wrong with this but it was just like something that was seen so many times that i just got kind of tired of it you know what i mean but mm. some people really like this stuff and i totally support that but it just wasn't like my style i realized yeah i feel like every photographer has tried to copy brandon wolfel's style at like one point or another <laughs> Very, very true like that's yeah like i think there's a whole like hashtag like doing the brandon wolfo like when like people were like doing like the string lights and the prisms <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's funny i mean his work his work is great i really yeah. enjoy it but it's like he's probably the most copied photographer of like the last few years like just yeah. everybody is trying to put out stuff like his <laughs> yeah, for sure <laughs> um so are there any like are there any sort of like other accounts like whether they're photographers or like feature pages and stuff like that that you follow on Instagram that you really enjoy? I do follow a lot of feature pages actually because it's just so convenient. Like you see so many talented artists all on one page. It's like wow, like this is great. <laughs> yeah, I think my favorite would be um, Bleach Film, uh, okay. Lost of Braids, and um, Waiting on the World. And then I know there's like so many feature pages, but I think those are like the top three. I always find myself on for inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good ones. I, I haven't heard of the last one, but I, I definitely follow bleach film. That's cool. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts on like Instagram as a whole and like its impact on like photographers and photography. Um, cause I definitely feel like it's, sort of a double-edged sword like on on one hand you know it's a great platform to share your work and connect with other creative people and then on the other hand like there's you know people just trying to copy trends or you know people chasing likes and that sort of thing so like yes. what are your thoughts and i was reading an article recently about like how you know people who, who are spending a lot of time on Instagram have like higher instances of depression and stuff like that. <laughs> and I've definitely like had those, had those moments where like I'm scrolling on Instagram and I see a photo that someone posts, like they're traveling and like they're in like Maui or something. I'm like, Oh man, that's like, like, I wish I was doing that right now. So like, what are, what are your thoughts on like just how Instagram is sort of like shaping the photography scene? Oh gosh. I, I totally agree with you. Like, um, it definitely is a double-edged sword. Like, 
social media itself, like Instagram, it's it has definitely connected me with a lot of other people. It's also given me a lot of opportunities like this, for example. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's definitely like it's definitely helped me grow as a photographer. But at the same time, it took me because of Instagram, it took me a really long time to realize that like the amount of likes that you get or like the amount of followers you get, amount of engagement doesn't really define your photography. Like it it took me a while to understand that. Like for me, like for example, I think like um, a few years ago, I would I would like work really hard on a photo, I would post it, and then like I wouldn't like reach like my expectations, so I would feel like really depressed. Like okay, like maybe, maybe this isn't a good photo. Mm-hmm. That's why. But then I realize now like Instagram is great for like um, connecting and socializing with others, but when it comes down to like the art aspect of it, I really try not to worry about like my engagement or whatever like with my audience like. I'm just there to share my work. Like I don't, I don't really care much for like how many likes I get or like how many comments I get. So. Yeah, that's a good approach to have because like it's it's tough. Like it's easy to fall into that trap. Like I find myself doing that from time to time too. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. like recently when they they instituted a new algorithm, like I saw my sort of like the amount of likes and comments I would get on a photo like went way down. Like oh. to. To, to kind of the point like where I was getting like the same amount of likes that I would get when I had like half as many followers as I do now. And I don't have a ton of followers, but I was kind of like, it may, it was making me wonder, I'm like, am I not progressing in my work or is it like, is it just because they made some change to the algorithm and people aren't seeing it anymore? Like, it's hard to tell. Like I, and I realized that I was using like how many likes I would get on a photo is sort of like the measuring stick for how good a particular photo is and now it's like that whole balance is thrown off so now i'm like i don't know if my work's good <laughs> and i had to like <laughs> there was like definitely a point in time where i like did not feel proud of my work because of like my low engagement because of the whole algorithm thing right but yeah i totally agree with you but it definitely like i feel like i've kind of recovered from it like i mean like it's still hard to not look at the numbers honestly like i think mm-hmm. like people can relate to this but i definitely have to like con- like constantly tell myself like don't look at the numbers just focus on like improving myself and like uh, photography wise like just don't worry about the numbers yeah yeah it's it's a it's a good approach to have it's like something i always have to remind myself of because it's it's tough because like when you open up instagram the numbers are so in your face like if you go to someone's profile like the first thing at the top is like how many followers they have how many posts they have how many like people are like they're following like when you go to a photo like the first thing that's below it is like how many people like that photo how many people left comments so like it's very visible and in your face and i've seen it like weirdly change people like some people will get like a few thousand followers and then all of a sudden they get like a big ego (laughs) and it's like (laughs) it's really strange to see heads honestly yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) and like i've i've seen and like i've been on the receiving end of it and then i've seen people get treated differently based on whether they don't have a lot of followers or they do have a lot of followers and it just it's so bizarre to me to like see all this playing out because like i don't know i'm i'm a bit older than you so like when i was growing up like the internet was around but like we didn't have like social media in our face to this degree so to like see this in my adult life you know it's it's very strange like seeing how people behave differently compared to like when i was in you know high school to like now Mm -hmm, for sure for sure and i i've seen it too like for me like back when i was starting out like of course i didn't have like the following i have now right so when i would go to like these photo meetups and I would like meet like these other like huge photographers, super popular photographers. And when I would like ex- when we would exchange usernames, like like I remember they would um I was definitely treated very differently back then mm-hmm. when I was growing up. And then compared to now, like now that I've grown a little bit more on my page, I've definitely been treated way differently by way more people. And it's just it's just yeah. crazy. Like, it's <laughs> I was kind of upset over it for a little while, but I'm just like, that's just the reality. Like, like people will like respect others with like huge followings. It was, it's really sad. Like, I really don't support that at all. 
Like, yeah. when was that was like starting out, like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it gets it gets to a weird point too, like where, you know, I, I have a few friends who like have pretty substantial followings, like in the hundreds of thousands and they get people who will try to be friends with them and stuff just because they have a huge following. And they're like constantly having to like, not be like questioning everybody they meets like intentions, but it's like, you know, you start to wonder like, what is somebody's purpose for like, trying to hang out or like trying to like meet up and shoot photos, you know? For sure. Oh my gosh. Like I've, I've had so many instances where like, I couldn't tell if someone was just like talking to me because, um, they would need photos, or, like free photos too. And then like, I <laughs> want to be friends with me cause, cause of my following. I was just like, so like, I totally like understand like how you're like, what you were talking about. Like I'm definitely more aware of like people's like intentions. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So wh what kind of like photo meetups have you been able to go to like since you've been getting into photography? Like have you gone to any in the Bay Area? Have you gone to any like kind of where you're living now? I've, I've only been to like the ones in the Bay Area, the ones held in San Francisco. When I was starting out, I definitely attended a lot more. I went to like the um, the H meetups. Mm -hmm. um, I also went to like a like a few more like smaller ones hosted by like other like random photographers, um, and then to be completely honest, like I think photo meetups are like really cool, but I never really enjoyed it as much as I think I should, just because of the whole thing I told you about how I felt like I was so like treated differently because I wasn't like, as experienced as the other photographers, mm -hmm. and then. Um, the last one I, I went to was actually one of my friends. Um, I don't know if you know her. She goes by Chloe Buddha on Instagram. So, oh, I don't think I've known her. Oh, it's okay. Like she she runs like a magazine called Vintage Lilacs, and so um, she was hosting like a whole meetup like to promote her her new issue, right? And so I was like, yeah, I'll go like to support you because like she's like my friend. And yeah. then um, I remember at that particular meetup, I was I met a lot of photographers who who actually knew me already, which was really weird, <laughs> but it was expected though. And so <laughs> I like, it, the whole vibe was really different from what I remembered it to be. Like so many people treated me differently, more people tried to talk to me. And I was like, wow, like I definitely know like why this is happening. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, they're fun, but um, I, I don't really go as much as I did before. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has anybody ever like stopped you on the street? Be like, are you Marilyn to win? Are you Marilyn and to win? <laughs> um, a few times. Yes. Um, in the Bay area is always at like milk tea places. Actually <laughs> <laughs> really. I don't know why, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it happened a few times, but not super often. Yeah. It's where all the Instagrammers go, I guess. <laughs> You know what? Um, one of my best friends, she goes by Isis Chu on Instagram. Mm -hmm. People come up to me and they're just like, "Oh, you're Isis Chu's photographer, right?" And I get more like comments on that. <laughs> like, I'm just a photographer. Yeah, I take pictures of her, but also other people. <laughs> really, like, I think like the um, uh, compared to like the amount of times like I've been called out, like just for my page, like I've been called out more for being like this particular person's photographer. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> honestly, like it's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess if you shoot photos of someone a lot, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Mm -hmm. So with, with like the meetups and stuff, like I, you know, I've found that I, I mean, I'm somewhat extroverted. I consider myself like a moderately extroverted introvert. Like <laughs> I, so like, going to meetups and stuff like I, I love it, but it's always like exhausting. So yes, would you, really yeah, <laughs> would you consider yourself like more introverted or more like ext extroverted? I, I think I'm definitely more extroverted. Um, I really love like meeting other people, socializing and all that. But I think there is some introvert parts of me who just wants to stay home and not talk to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm like like a solid combination of both, but if anything, definitely more extroverted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I found with the meetups and stuff, like it's it's a great way to connect with people. But you know, I if I go to a bunch of them like in a short succession, I'm like, okay, I need to like 
just have some chill time. <laughs> Actually, I totally agree. I get super tired after it's like you meet so many people and so many like so much small talk, and it's just like at the end of the day, just like whoa, like that's really tiring. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So, um, just want to ask a couple more questions, and then we can probably wrap up. Um, but what are some of your like goals with your photography? Like, I know you said you you do some you've done some like, you know, portraits and stuff on the side. You started like a little bit of a side business. You're in school mm -hmm. now. So like, um, where, where would you like your photography to go? And like, what are some of the things you'd like to do? Um, goal wise, I definitely want to work with like, um, really big brands, like clothing brands, for example, like, I would love to work with like PacSun, Brandy Melville. Like that's definitely been like a long-term goal ever since I started. But I think what's definitely more important for me is to just keep photography as like, like not as something for like a business, more like something just like for me, honestly, like mm -hmm. I want to improve like my technique, my skill work. And like, um, I think that's definitely more important for me than like anything else business wise. Um, because I am like, I think I also want to focus on school. Like I would definitely want to keep photography as a side job. Um, I, I did think about having it as like a full-time career, but I feel like, um, based on my experience, like if I change something I really love into like, kind of like work, I'll definitely mm -hmm. have like a different, different feel of it. If that makes any sense. Sorry, that was really complicated, but <laughs> no, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's, that's one of the pitfalls that a lot of people fall into who like whatever their passion is or their hobby is like you start it. It's, it's something you do as just fun. And then to switch it to something that you rely on as your income, mm -hmm. you know, your main source of income, your career, it changes your relationship to it. Like a lot of photographers who kind of make that leap end up burning out. Some mm -hmm. folks love it. Like some folks, you know, they'll start doing wedding photography or commercial photography and, you know, they end up loving running a business. But I think part of it is a lot of people have like, maybe if they're, if they're working like a day job that they don't like and they're doing photography on the side and they really love it, they kind of start thinking, well, if I was doing this as a day, like as my job, then everything would be great. But what they don't like realize is like, all of the other pieces that go into like running a photography business or doing freelance photography that don't involve actually like taking the picture and <laughs> also like the workload increase. Like I was just talking with one of my other podcast episodes with um, my friend, Aaron of Boston. Uh, she used to work at Apple and then she became a full-time wedding photographer and she really enjoys it. But one of the things that she's like kind of learned with it is like, you know, she'll shoot a couple wedding like weddings over the course of a weekend and she'll have like 20,000 photos to call through and edit. <laughs> like, um, I know there's a lot of people who are definitely able to make it like their full-time career and they love it. And that's awesome. Like that's something I wish I could do. But for me, I know for me personally, like, um, like normally having to edit like so many photos, that sounds like a great thing, right? Like that's something like it would, sounds like I would love to do but I know for me like if that that were something like I would rely on as an income I would hate to go through so many and then have it to think of it as a chore and that's something yeah. I think, yeah yeah so it's good to just sort of like keep your relationship to photography like friendly and like <laughs> fun <laughs> definitely that's definitely what I'm trying to go for <laughs> that's cool so do you have any um I mean, I know you're still in school and stuff, but do you have any plans to do any like travel and like connect with other like photographers and models like in other places? I would, I would love to honestly. That's that's also like a one of like um, a really big goal that I have. Maybe not so much right now because I am still in school and like college is like super expensive. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's definitely something I'm I'm definitely trying to go for in the future. All right, that's cool. Well, I think we can probably wrap up i'll just ask before we stop the recording um where can where can people connect with you online oh you can definitely like dm me on instagram like i'm always like reading people's dms you know and then you can uh, also email me my email is in my instagram bio so you can definitely reach me through there and i will try my best to respond to as many as i can but i will get back to you <laughs> all right cool 
Well, thank you for joining me tonight, Marilyn. And this has been a great podcast. All right, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate yeah. it. So I hope you all enjoyed this interview with Marilyn. As always, I will be linking up all of her contact info and social handles in the description. We'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Damn Bowl Photography. Peace.